Let America Be America Again is a poem written in 1935 by the distinguished American poet Langston Hughes. It made its debut in the July 1936 issue of Esquire magazine, subsequently appearing in the 1937 edition of Kansas Magazine. The poem was later revised and incorporated into a modest anthology of Hughes's works titled A New Song, published by the International Workers' Order in 1938. In this poignant piece, Hughes articulates the disillusionment of the lower-class American with the American dream, a vision of freedom and equality that remained unattainable for many, particularly immigrants who harbored aspirations of a better life. Through his verse, Hughes gives voice not only to African Americans but also to other economically disadvantaged and minority groups. Highlighting the broader struggle for genuine equality and opportunity in the United States. The speaker opens the poem with an ostensibly patriotic proclamation, urging America to once again embody the principles it purportedly champions. The speaker expresses nostalgia for a bygone America that upheld freedom and opportunity but immediately challenges this sentiment suggesting that such an image was never the speaker's reality. Invoking the concept of the American dream, the speaker implores the nation to represent freedom and opportunity for all, to become a place of strength and compassion. Immune to the power imbalances perpetuated by historical tyrants. Despite this plea, the speaker acknowledges that such an idealized America has never been experienced by them. The speaker yearns for an America that genuinely champions freedom, where equality and legitimate opportunities abound, yet reveals this vision as an unfulfilled promise, a mere facade of patriotism. Addressing those disillusioned by the false promises of the American dream, the speaker identifies with the oppressed throughout American history. Impoverished whites, African Americans scarred by slavery, Native Americans displaced from their land, and immigrants seeking better futures only to find a society dominated by the rich and powerful. The speaker empathizes with the hopeful youth, whose dreams are thwarted by an America driven by greed and exploitation, principles that have plagued civilization since antiquity. Identifying with those whose lives lack freedom, the farmer tied to the soil, the worker to the machine, the African-American to servitude, the speaker denounces the American dream's failure to alleviate the masses suffering, who are driven to cruelty by their hunger. Rejecting the notion that hard work leads to success, the speaker highlights the plight of the working class, laboring tirelessly yet remaining in poverty. This critique extends to the observation that the most oppressed were once the staunchest believers in the American dream. European immigrants, seeking refuge and opportunity, and African slaves, forcibly brought to build the homeland of the free, laid the groundwork for this dream. The speaker questions who truly belongs to this homeland of the free, asserting that neither they nor the millions of underpaid workers, striking against exploitation, are free. Referencing the labor movement of the 1930s, the speaker laments that working-class Americans have little to show for their patriotism and hard work. Concluding with a call to action, the speaker urges America to fulfill its true self, confident that the American dream's realization is both possible and necessary. The speaker calls upon the oppressed, whose sacrifices built the country, to rise and reinvent America according to its founding ideals of equality and freedom. Unfazed by potential insults, the speaker asserts that true freedom and equality must be reclaimed from those profiting without labor. 
Reiterating that America has never met its promises, the speaker vows to create the nation that should exist. Believing the American dream can be actualized through the efforts of those who have always formed its backbone. Only by rising against their mistreatment and reclaiming the nation can America truly embody its foundational ideals. Let America be America again underscores the stark contrast between the lofty ideals of the American dream and the grim realities of American life. The poet contends that the United States has yet to fulfill its grand promises of liberty and equality for all its citizens. Hughes composed this poignant poem during the Great Depression, a period marked by severe economic turmoil that triggered a profound crisis in American cultural identity. The nation's ethos of upward mobility and universal opportunity was starkly contradicted by the pervasive hardship of the era. This cultural disillusionment is echoed by the speaker's declaration, let America be America again. Let it be the dream it used to be. This plea signifies a longing for a return to a glorified past, though it soon becomes apparent that the speaker views this vision as a mere illusion. The speaker explicitly refutes the notion that America was ever the utopia it claims to be, asserting that the American dream was never truly realized. By invoking the nation's foundational ideals of freedom and equality, the speaker indicts American society for failing to uphold these very principles. This disdain for the superficial rhetoric of liberty is sharply conveyed through the sarcastic line, There's never been equality for me nor freedom in this homeland of the free. The poem then vividly recounts the experiences of black Americans, the working poor, Native Americans, and immigrants, groups consistently marginalized and oppressed. The speaker argues that these communities have always been subjected to a relentless cycle of exploitation, epitomized by the refrain, the same old stupid plan of dog eat dog, of mighty crush the weak. This narrative suggests that American society is not unique, but is instead a continuation of the oppressive systems that have plagued humanity throughout history. The speaker links these reflections to the socio-political context of the Great Depression and the burgeoning labor movement. Referencing the plight of striking workers who receive nothing but the dream that is almost dead today for their efforts. This suggests a glimmer of hope that the American dream might still be realized, albeit precariously. However, the poem makes it clear that this dream will remain unfulfilled as long as greed and exploitation prevail. The imagery of the man who never got ahead the poorest worker bartered through the years underscores the systemic failure to provide genuine opportunities for advancement, depicting workers as mere commodities in a relentless economic exchange. This critique culminates in a call to action, urging the oppressed to reclaim their rights from those who live like leeches on the people's lives and to restore America to its foundational ideals of equality and freedom. The poem's conclusion is a powerful exhortation for collective action, proclaiming, from those who live like leeches on the people's lives we must take back our land again, America. The speaker envisions a reinvention of the nation, grounded in its original promise, and concludes with an optimistic vow that America will be emphasizing that it is not too late for the country to achieve its founding ideals. This hopeful ending reaffirms the enduring power and significance of the American dream within the cultural consciousness, despite the critical examination of its shortcomings. The overriding symbol in the poem is arguably America itself. 
America is meant to embody all that the American dream encapsulates, with the speaker repeatedly alluding to the conventional perception of America as a bastion of opportunity, freedom, and equality. Nonetheless, the speaker asserts that while America has long stood for these lofty ideals, it has yet to actualize them. Consequently, by the poem's conclusion, America becomes a symbol of failure, epitomizing the consequences when a nation fails to uphold its founding principles. Yet, America simultaneously retains its representation of hope and the promise of a better future. Despite the speaker's trenchant critique of America's past and present, the poem concludes on an optimistic note, intimating that America still harbors the potential to fulfill its original ideals. The figure of the pioneer is invoked multiple times throughout the poem, likely due to its significant role in American culture and history. The speaker draws a parallel between the original pioneers, who established the early settlements that would eventually become the United States and the diverse groups of people who have built America through their own labor and toil. The hopes and aspirations of these initial pioneers, now mirrored in the efforts and protests of the working class, symbolize the spirit of early America before it was overshadowed by unrestrained capitalism and avarice. The speaker employs the symbol of the pioneer to remind readers of America's original ethos and the extent to which it has deviated from its foundational message. The pioneer, in search of a new life and fresh opportunities, symbolizes all industrious Americans striving for a better existence within the United States. <laughs>